Namaste. I am Anupama Kizaki Vital, Professor and Program Director of Ayurvedic Medicine at the Southern California University of Health Science. So, topic for today is Ayurveda for Management for Rheumatoid Arthritis and Evidence Based Report. So, as you all know, rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic, systemic, inflammatory, and autoimmune disease that affects the smaller and larger joint of the body. It is the most common autoimmune inflammatory arthritis in adults. RA is associated with the morbidity, chronic disability, and poor quality of life, and the cost of care is really huge. Worldwide annual incidence of RA is approximately three cases per 10,000 population, and the estimated prevalence of RA is about 1%. The prevalence of RA is approximately in 1% of US population, women are affected three times more often than men. And mostly the, this condition is occurring between the age of 40 to 60 years. So many factors like uh, susceptibility genes, disease causing immune cell, cytokines, and other signal transduction networks are involved in the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. The mainstream of our mainstream management of RA include use of non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, analgesic and other biological agents. Conservative treatment is mostly symptomatic and often associated with the adverse event. There has been increased utilization of alternative and complementary medicine healthcare option, which has been reported as a kind of safe management of RA. And there are several research studies done uh, from the complementary and alternative medicine aspect for the management of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. In US, there are about 60 to 90 percentage of arthritis patients use CAM. And one of the survey done in India, it shows that about 40 percentage of rheumatoid arthritis patients use either Ayurveda or homeopathic medicine both fall under the alternative medicine along with the conventional medicine practice. And you can see here, you know, more women are more, mostly affected and what are the current management, mainstream management of RA, RA includes. And one, one of the main thing, you know, there is association between smoking and alcohol with this disease condition as well. And uh, there are several risk factors associated with this and then complication involved in this. So 70% 70, 70 of RA patients have a wrist and problem, whereas 90% of RA patients have the symptoms in the foot. So in general, the RA symptom include uh, fatigue, lack of appetite, low-grade fever, muscle and joint ache, and stiffness. So what are the criteria for diagnosing of RA from the conventional medicine approach? The criteria include morning stiffness, pain on the movement or tenderness in at least one joint, swelling in joint, symmetric joint swelling, subcutaneous nodules, radiologic changes, and blood test rheumatoid factors in serum, and poor mucin precipitate from synovial fluid, and histological change in synovium and nodule. And here, this symptom one to four must be continuous for at least six weeks for diagnosing RA. And there are several blood tests, uh, like rheumatoid factor test or Rosweller test and the anti-CCP antibody. It's an, uh, more specific than actually RA factor. This synovial fluid analysis, ESR, C-reactive protein, normocytic or normochromic antibody. So now let's look at the Ayurvedic classical textbook, what it is talking about RA. So in Ayurveda, this disease can be compared with the Amavada. So Amavada is an inflammatory systemic disorder caused by formation of Ama. As the word indicates, Ama and Vata. There are two ter terms here. So the Ama means here the undigested metabolites. So this disease is first explained in a classical textbook in Ayurveda around 600 to 700 AD. That is the time period when this specific disease is mentioned in a classical literature. So etiology from Ayurvedic perspective, you know, if you look at the etiology, you can see that it's mostly connected with the gut. So when it's incompatible food, unwholesome lifestyle practices, having low metabolism and sluggish digestion for a longer period, sedentary life activities, 
exercise immediately after consuming unctuous and oily food everything is related with the gut here if you if you don't take care of the digestive system properly if you don't pay attention to the digestion metabolism and assimilation and also if you are not having a proper exercise or lifestyle practices or the lifestyle practice which are not suitable to your body if you are practicing that if you are involving in the lifestyle activities which are not suitable to the, your body that all can lead to amavata okay so now let's look at the pathology from ayurvedic perspective due to these causative factors ama ama here as i explained earlier it's undigested metabolites and also biological energy which represent air or what we call it vata so both of this get you know ama itself is an imbalanced state and that along with the imbalance this uh, air uh, biological principle which represent air get imbalanced further and this pushes this undigested metabolites into a different part of the body through circulation and especially to the bony joint and muscle so it's very difficult you know explain vata that uh, in one terminology you know so i'm trying my level best to translate the uh, a simple uh, meaning but it's not just the biological energy which represent the air it has a lot of meaning into it you know uh, it is the energy which is uh, responsible for any type of movement in the body mainly present in the bone and also in the joints and there are several located okay, there are main uh, several function associated with that several location mainly explain under what have when it balance it play a role in health promotion if there is an imbalance it causes the disease manifestation okay so here if we look at in deep the main cause of pathological factors here is the undigested metabolites and vata or the biological energy which represent air principle because of the causative factor this get imbalanced and push this ama the combination of this pushes this ama again into the different part of the body through the circulation especially bony joint and muscle so what are the symptom explain in the classical literature body ache poor appetite feeling thirsty and lethargy malaise weakness feeling of heaviness feeling of feverishness slight increase in the temperature indigestion inflammation of body parts mainly joint when this disease becomes severe it is very difficult to treat the symptoms such as severe pain in the hand foot head ankle neck lower back knee and hip joints pain and swelling happen in the different parts of the body and pain will be severe as if it bit by the scorpion that is another feature or uh, explain so ra patients and uh, especially amavata patient the pain will be extremely severe sometimes now what are the treatment principle one of bau prakasha one of the classical literature in ayurveda explain lankhana lankhana word we hear meaning uh, fasting or light to digest food that is the number one treatment principle again you can see the connection between the gut here right even the patient is coming with this pain in the joints the treatment principle it's talk about is langanam that is fasting or food which are light to digest and the second one is sweat therapy swedana or we can compare that to a sweat therapy and then use of the herb which are bitter and pungent taste tiktam kadune bitter tikta tikta rasa here means bitter taste and pungent taste so we select the herbs to treat this condition a mainly bitter and pungent taste and then deepen it digestive stimulant stimulating the appetite or not only stimulating the appetite you can say the stimulating the digest digestion and then medicated inducing purging induced purging or therapeutic purging that is uh, um, it's here it's not just the uh, give the some herbs and purging effect you prepare the patient for purging at least you will take it's almost take one week for the preparation itself and then there is a therapy induced therapeutic purgation 
you give the herbs to purge and then again after that also you have to prepare the body so there will be another seven days specific diet and lifestyle so before purging therapy we give us ghee in a specific dosage increasing dose and then we also apply the oil externally and then give the steam therapy and then the purging therapy and then you prepare the body with the specific diet and lifestyle so that whole package is called medicated induced purging or we can call it therapeutic purging or another in more classical terminology is virechana and then medicated enema that is the another uh, uh, treatment principle and then dry sweat therapy and valuka potli valuka potli here means you know the seashore sand you know it dry kind of heat it and then you tie it in a cloth and create a bolus or potli kind of thing and then you use that for doing the treatment and ubanaha it's another uh, you can also use the spices uh, to prepare the bolus and then use the treatment do the treatment with that and another important factor here is avoiding use of any kind of oily substance so these are the main treatment principle explained for the management of amavata so now let's look at little more in detail uh, what are the treatment we give so first here we said that there are ama or undigested toxin accumulate undigested and metabolites accumulation is one of the pathology here right so we choose the herbs which are specific to manage that undigested toxin and also jwarahara here you know patient usually have the temperature little rise increase the temperature in the western medicine perspective you can also explain there is inflammatory changes so we select the ayurvedic herbs to address these two pathogen here okay so there are panchatikta kashayam hingwashtak churna sudarshan churna avipattikara churna there are a lot of herbal combination to address this and then once this amapachana that undigested metabolites is addressed okay when it become when it completely digested or when that stage is moved further you know manage that that stage is managed the next stage of treatment is Uh, mainly to address the vata here to rasna decoction simhanada goglu hingwashtaka churam again rasna de goglu ama vata re rasa etc can be given so in the previous slide i said right to a bolus preparation that is kind of like this so you can use the dry sand tied into this and then use this specific bolus for doing the treatment now the external therapy yeah, i have a picture here for the external therapy so there are different type of external therapies explained for the management of amavata one is the swedana therapy that is rukshya swedha here rukshya swedha is dry sweating therapy in that one is valuka potli as i explained earlier you can use the seashore sand i usually tell my patients to get the sand from home depot the place sand you know you can make sure you know it's really clean sand in traditionally back in indian we say go to the seashore and collect it but nowadays you cannot you know it's really challenging to get the really good quality of sand in the seashore also so we need to make sure it's clean well etc so you first i tell them to dry roast it in iron pan kind of dry heat it you know and then you will tie it in a cotton cloth like this and then you you will use this and heat it on iron pan and then do the treatment on the joint that is what valuka potli means that is a very one of the very effective treatment for rheumatoid arthritis another one is you know same thing you can use a different type of dry quality substance uh, horse gram sesame seed ajwain eranda punarnava etc can be added and then you can do the therapy and there are certain leaves also patrapinda swetha so certain leaves also you can use uh, and tie it in a Uh, like this the cotton cloth and use this for doing the massage then you can use the oil uh, only when that uh, undigested metabolites is addressed and if you have to confirm that uh, there is no ama or undigested metabolites accumulation then you can decide to go for oil therapies so and that condition also there are specific oil needs to be used rukshasneha 
the oil which is processed with the dry quality kind of herbs that's what we need to use it here for oil application in ayurveda uh, for a rheumatoid arthritis patient if you apply the oil in ama ama when ama is not addressed and if we apply the oil it further worsen the patient condition so that is very important to make sure before you apply the oil there is no ama present in the patient it should be in the niramavastha stage and the lepa is you know there are shadha pushpadi lepa the shangala but there are several paste herbal paste application so to summarize for external therapy we use the uh, sweat therapy using the sand and also all uh, different type of spices or uh, herbs herbs and also you can apply the oil and with this, which is processed with the dry quality herbs uh, herbs and then also you can also apply the paste or herbs so these are the external therapy mainly used in this condition and there are panchakarma that is a cleansing therapy panchakarma means there are five detoxifying or five cleansing therapies and in among that virejana which i explained earlier therapeutic purging or medicated induced purging and then medicated enema enema which is prepared with the different type of herbs oil decoction etc can be used in this patient so what most commonly practiced in uh, when you treat the amavata condition from ayurvedic perspective there it's not the same type of treatment you will continue forever we have to observe the patient and in the initial stage there is a set of herbs after a few weeks the this will be completely changed to the another set of herbs so we have to monitor the patient closely and then we need to decide the specific therapy based on the patient condition so it's not about based on the patient's diagnosis only the same disease go into the different stage as you treat and based on that the your choice of herb will be also different so when there is a more ama when there is more digestive metabolites accumulation then food which are light to digest food or the fasting or dry ther drying therapy herb with the drying property will be used sweating therapy will be used different type of enema is used and different type of paste of herbs is used for pain and swelling and purgative ther induced or therapeutic purgative or daily purgative can be used if the pain is very severe even leech therapy is also mentioned when that ama stage is removed then the next will be you can one of the cleansing therapy that is therapeutic purgation and then enema can be given to this patient now individual herbs for this condition there are so many herbs actually classical literature explain guglu dashamola ashwagandha rasna guduji nirgundi shundi pippali gokshura trivrit musta and castor oil these are the different commonly used herb for managing this condition individual herbs and people may use combination of these herbs or individual herb for this condition so now let's look at the diet perspective because when when we look at ayurvedic management ayurvedic approach it's not just about the herb it's not just about the therapy so we recommend diet lifestyle recommendation and various type of herbs and body work therapies and exercise yoga so here in the dietary perspective uh, one should take old rice butter milk wet ginger garlic wheat bitter gourd and horse gram avoid consumption of dairy products sweet oily food junk and fast food salty and sour food jaggery black gram fish and cold drinks this is from the classical literature what needs to be avoided for this condition so now what i try to uh, line up what can be given as a breakfast in this in this country what will be the best breakfast for a our patient or amavata patient so kamut puffed cereal or millet puffed cereal uh, or barley puffed cereal with almond milk and raisin or cut dates or you can mix it with the dried mulberry or dried blueberry you know 
So kamut, millet or barley can be given or barley cooked overnight in a slow cooker because barley usually take more time to cook. So you may want to start cooking, you know, uh, day before the night before and uh, in a slow cooker, you can use it or uh, cook in the morning at least for 90 minutes. If you have more time in the morning, you can do it in the morning as well. Then add it with the berries and cut almond and honey. Another one is amaranth. You can cook the amaranth with a lot of water and then add some dates, walnut, coconut oil. You know, you can saute all these things, dates, almond and um, walnut with the coconut oil and <clears throat> add this into amaranth and mix it well and take it. Or if you want to eat some pro you know, egg, etc. So scrambled egg with um, stir fried green greens one cup of stir fried greens you can use a little bit coconut oil when you fry it and add a little bit black pepper powder and turmeric so you need to take care of the gut to stimulate so act as a digestive stimulant make sure your digestive fire is strong enough to digest it so that is one of the important when if you're eating a little bit heavy food for this kind, of make sure you adding some ginger, black pepper, turmeric, etc., so that it get digest and metabolize it properly. And other spices such as cumin, coriander, fennel, ajwain, all that will be good as well. So now let's look at the lunch. What can be given as lunch? Cook quinoa, one and a half cup to two cup. Again, dark green, sauteed or stir fried. You can about two cup. You can use green onion, scallion, uh, um, fennel bulb, the ginger, onion, garlic, chives, shallots, two cup of steamed or sauteed or stir fried veggies with a fresh herb and spices like cumin, oregano, thyme or basil. So this can be a good lunch. Dinner, you know, the best will be the soup here. A dinner always make sure you are taking something which are light to digest. You make sure you add some fresh ginger, turmeric, and black pepper in your ginger. Again, our goal is always to protect the gut. You know, so vegetable soup with the soba noodles, or coconut curry soup with veggies and quinoa noodles, or butternut or pumpkin soup with quinoa. Again, I'm repeating. When you use some of these things, you know, especially coconut curry soup, make sure you're adding some ginger, little bit black pepper and turmeric, etc. Now about the lifestyle. Very important, the lifestyle aspect. One should avoid cold breeze and excessive wind. Bathing with the cold water and keeping awake at night should be strictly avoided. Warm water bath is recommended. Take gently walk after consumption of food and avoid water intake immediately after consumption of food. Wait for an half an hour to one hour to take the water. And also another important thing for Amma, you know, uh, consuming a little hot water throughout the day, little by sip by sip, also very good to protect the digestive system and to address the heaviness, fatigue, and sluggishness. What I'm going to talk now is evidence from the current literature. What are the published study in Ayurveda about Amavata, or rheumatoid arthritis condition. So there was one study which is uh, just talking about curcumin formulation. Long-term use of currently available drug for the treatment of RA has many potential side effects. So this study is mainly focusing on the effectiveness of this uh, uh, curcumin formulation for the management of RA. So here, what they talk about is a RA patient who received curcumin product at both low and high dose reported statistically significant changes in their clinical symptom at the end of the study. These observations were confirmed by significant changes ESR, CPR, and RF value in patient receiving the study product compared to the baseline and placebo. The result indicate that Curcumin in a turmeric matrix act as an analgesic anti-inflammatory agent for management of RA at a dose as low as 200 milligram twice daily. 
and as evidenced by significant improvement in the ESR, CPR, VAS, RF, DAS 28, and ACR response compared to the placebo. So it shows promising result for the management of RA with curcumin. And the second study is about the uh, uh, Virajana karma. So Virajana karma, as I explained earlier, it's a specific one of the five cleansing therapy. Uh, we can compare that to a, a therapeutic purgation. Here, uh, after Virajana karma, RA factor reduced from 94 to 50. And CPR reduced from 20.7 milligram to 1.8. Overall, it's showing that uh, this uh, thinks actually this is a single case report. Uh, it's highlight that Amavada can be managed with the appropriate dietary regimen. And the second one is uh, another study which is published uh, talking about uh, Tinospora cardiofolia and uh, gingiber officinalis, semicarpus anacardia. And they compare with formulation with the hydroxychloroquine. So that is the combination they used actually. Here, so you all know the hydrochlor hydroxychloroquine is a popular disease modifying anti-rheumatic drug, right? So what they did is the objective of this study is compare standardized Ayurvedic formulation and hydroxychloroquine in the treatment of RA. The study result shows that did not show any significant difference by treatment group. In the polyherb, monoherb, and hydrochloroquine arm, 40 power percentage, 36 percentage, and 51 percentage changes are noticed. So this preliminary drug trial control for hydroxychloroquine demonstrated that standardized Ayurvedic polyherb drug to be effective and safe in controlling patient with the active rheumatoid arthritis. That is what the conclusion of the study. So this study also shows, you know, it is giving a result very similar to the hydroxychloroquine for RA patients, Ayurvedic herbal combination, specifically the Tinospora corifolia, ginger officinalis, and semicarpus anacardia. Those are the herbs used in this study. Another study, which is talking about the double blind randomized control pilot study about the classic Ayurvedic medicine and methotrexate. So objective is to compare classic Ayurveda and methotrexate and um, their combination in a double blind randomized double dummy pilot trial in a rheumatoid arthritis for a 36 week trial actually. So this study result also demonstrate that double blind placebo controlled randomized studies are possible when testing individualized classic Ayurvedic versus allopathic treatment in a uh, in ways acceptable to the Western standard to Ayurvedic position. It also uh, justify the need for the larger study. Pretty much similar effect as methotrexate were given by Ayurvedic herbs combination also. And one of the speciality of this study was it is an individualized treatment. So they didn't sell it. All the patient will get exactly the same treatment. That's why they had a bunch of, lot of herbs choice for this uh, trial. So it's an individualized treatment done. There is a trend that methotrexate had a more adverse event compared to Ayurveda, but statistically there was no big difference. What is the conclusion here? So evidence from the classical textbook provide the knowledge about the various Ayurvedic modality for management of Amavada. We can see that, right? We so just mentioned that really it's not just about the thorough explanation is explained. Starting from the causative factors, pathology, symptom, uh, treatment principle and treatment. And it's a time-tested medicine. It's been practicing for thousands of years using those principles, right? But one important point is it's not one single medicine. Once a, one, once a patient is diagnosed with RA, from Ayurvedic perspective, it is not the same medicine forever. We have we need a closely, we need to closely monitor the patient and the line of treatment principle or the approach change based on how the patient is improving. The treatment principle change. The herbs what we give the what we give to the patient will change, so that's very important, and we can see that it's connected to the gut, right? When you look at the pathology from Ayurvedic perspective, amavata or rheumatoid arthritis mainly uh, 
gut connection. So evident from the current literature indicate that there are several clinical trials done in Ayurvedic medicine. It also indicate that Ayurvedic approach are effective in the management of Amavata. So Ayurvedic understanding of pathogenesis of RNA are linked to the gut and the management chiefly consists of diet, lifestyle changes, various type of herbs, and various type of bodywork therapies. And what we have seen among the uh, uh, bodywork therapy, there are external therapies also, and as well as there are major cleansing therapy, which are therapeutic purgation, as well as therapeutic enemies explained for the management of RA. So thank you very much.